This is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoint. Now, your host, James Just. Gentlemen, the Supreme Court has issued a a ruling that we have all kind of are happy about, even though we're probably happier than we should be. It limits the power of, of police to enter your home and do a search under the caretaking oh, standard. Doctrine, yes. Yeah. It, it was, for me, the best thing about this was it was a 9-0 ruling, it, that it was a universal ruling. For, yeah. That was the best sign. But I don't think it goes as far as a lot of us think. Uh, John, what do you think about that one? Well, um, yeah, the the caretaking thing is is kind of scary because um, it 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 uh, you know allows uh, police especially to make a, a judgment about when other people are a danger to themselves or others, and then act um, accordingly. But um, you know, in this particular case that, that we did the, the research on, uh, or that somebody was kind enough to do the research on, uh, cops were called to a guy's home, and um, he he was 70, I think, and, and he owned a gun, and he was licensed and registered and everything, and he asked his wife, he was having, you know, some issues, and he asked his wife to, uh, to uh, shoot him. And, uh, and it was later taken away, and, and then the cops decided, well, this guy doesn't need a gun in his house. Well, at no time did he threaten anybody else. Did he? Did he? You know, he, he didn't have any arrests, any convictions, anything else. He and they just decided, oh, well, we're just going to take his gun. So, um, you know, that that kind of uh, of uh, broad interpretation of police power, you know, and the idea there there is a caretaking act. I understand, or a caretaking doctrine. I understand, you know, the idea that that sometimes people are going to do harm to themselves and. And a good Samaritan would, uh, you know, would do something to help them not do harm to themselves. That's the whole idea of it. But the idea that, that police can decide that is pretty frightening to me. And, um, you know, really what this thing says is that you, you just can't use an excuse to go in and take somebody's guns. And uh, oh, it was a it was a Fourth Amendment case. It was, a, yeah. you know, a search and seizure, a seizure yeah. without yeah. without a warrant. That was, was yeah. what the case turned on. Yeah. And that's pretty clear. They don't they didn't have a warrant. Uh, it was a domestic, uh, you know, argument between the husband and his wife and the wife called the cops on him. And uh, so they decided to take his gun. No warrant, no nothing. Just, hey, you got the gun, we'll take it. Uh, so, I mean, you know, it was kind of a no-brainer as far as the Supreme Court was concerned, mm-hmm. simply on Fourth Amendment grounds. This is, was not a Second Amendment case. Yeah. Well, no, I, I wasn't. I, I, I kind of wandered around. It's, I can't yeah. say it's early for me because, you know, we're doing this show. I've been up four hours, so I have no excuse. But, uh, yeah. you know, the idea that, 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 you know, unreasonable search and seizure has been going on. You know, I watch a lot of cop shows and read a lot of mysteries and all the rest of that. And, and in them... I, I would think that it's it's you know some kind of plot uh, to condition the the populace through popular media that it's okay for cops to do whatever they need to do to to close the case you know but you know we have rights for a reason and uh, the founding uh, persons the founding persons were uh, being politically correct here. You're, you're uh, following the uh, the Google guidelines as far yeah, as uh, yeah, gender. Yeah. I have, gender I have said, well, when we talk about that, I have, I have yeah, that a, next. a personal that. example. So I think yeah. it, it, you know, anything that cuts down on on the Gestapo's ability to kick your door in and take your stuff um, is a wonderful thing. And this spelled out pretty clearly. No, you you can't even use the caretaker doctrine, the caretaking doctrine, to take people's stuff. You know, I mean, so the idea that you can you can just use no reason whatsoever to take their stuff should should logically follow. But since we know that, um, uh, you know, the, the, the powers that be are very specific in, in their ignoring uh, court rulings and logic, uh, I don't think it's going to do much. But I like the idea that 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 they overturned the lower the circuit court and 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 said no you you need a search warrant to go into somebody's home you just can't decide after the fact that this person's going to present a danger and go take their stuff whether it's you know their potted plants or you know their babe ruth autographed baseball bat or a gun so i think it's i think it's great in a way but doesn't go far enough i agree with you james yeah yeah well, it's it's a strange it's a strange business that we live in it, 
we're dealing with these. Um, and I've lost my train of thought, so we'll just go ahead and move on. Uh, Google has decided that they're going to help you self-censor. They've decided that they're going to suggest what, in inclusive terms. They say inclusive terms mm -hmm. <laughs> as you are writing <laughs> as you are writing out <laughs> your Google emails and your Google Docs and all this various stuff. They are going to, you know, how they do this Google suggestions as you misspell words and whatnot. Mm. They're going to make yeah, you know, it's not, it, this is not really new. Uh, Google has been uh, doctoring searches for, for, you know, for years now. Uh, if you put in, a, uh, I think, uh, you, John, your favorite example is if, if you put in Hillary Clinton is, it'll come up with a lot of benign things as opposed mm. to some of the more uh, uh, and not so benign things, uh, mm -hmm. simply because that's the way they've got the algorithm uh, rigged. And now they're saying that if uh, you put in a, uh, a, a gender specific pronoun, he or she, uh, it'll change it to uh, they or, or you or, you know, it'll change it in a way to make it non gender specific in order to be, I guess, more politically correct. Now, I have a problem with political correctness. I mean, to me, political I'm shocked correct by that, Richard. I'm political correctness is simply uh, a way of nudging people into believing what uh, the uh, politically correct crowd would have you believe. And the politically correct crowd usually believes in a lot of nonsense. So uh, politically, you know, whenever somebody tells me to be politically correct, I want to check what their uh, underlying motive is. And mm -hmm. I would want to check what uh, Google's underlying motive is in this case. And I suspect Google's underlying motive is to stay uh, on the right side of the woke crowd, to stay on the right mm -hmm. side of the, uh, the politi correct, politically correct uh, uh, Karens out there. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and their, their ultimate rationale is to avoid uh, more regulation by a, uh, uh, an administration and a bureaucracy that is uh, controlled by Karens. Hmm. I, I have an example from another, uh, I don't want to mention, well, you mentioned Google and that's a commercial enterprise. I don't, uh, anyway, the, the most widely known uh, grammar checking program that's out there that tons and tons of people use. And I, I have a, the quote unquote professional version because I are a writer. And uh, I, you know, when you're writing, you, when you're writing for effect, uh, a, a good writer will, will ponder over and, and really burn some emotional energy picking the right word, the right word. Uh, uh, like as or during, while. I mean, you can sit and spend ten minutes choosing that. And I'm, I'm, I, I ran uh, a, a novel that I've finished, finally, uh, which Richard's already read through uh, this checker, and the phrase was uh, 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 a lot of blokes who man the walls go to this bar. And, and the grammar checking device uh, suggested that manning the walls might uh, cause some people to be upset because it was gender specific. And I looked at that sense and sentence and thought, well, first of all, you know, if you, you want to get published, you've got to watch word count. I could have rewritten the sentence and made it much worse and had it be non-gender specific. But if I did that, I would have got the suggestion that that was a bad sentence. So, um, you know, in, in, you know, quite frankly, uh, in every prison environment, the people who are manning the walls in most cases are men. So it is factually correct as well. So the, the links, you know, people go to to try not to hurt feelings is, is uh, ridiculous, first of all and counterproductive second. And the example that I used, Richard, uh, was uh, I, I put into Google, but since we're beating on Google here, uh, Hillary Clinton, Hillary Clinton, L-I, Hillary Clinton space L-I. And the, uh, the, the search that came back and nowhere on the first two pages was, was anything related to liar, lying, lies, all the rest of that. What came up first was library. Hillary Clinton Library. So I'm willing to bet that the number of people who were out there searching for Hillary Clinton and library, that was their goal, was probably 
or 0.01% of the people who are searching for Hillary Clinton, first letter L, second letter uh, I. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's pretty specific uh, algorithm tweaking. And when I looked on other, I used other search devices, um, my favorite, give a commercial plug, but I don't own any stock. I don't think it's public. If it's public, Google would have bought it because they're a great competitor. Duck, duck, go. And they don't uh, tweak their algorithms for political purpose. And so uh, most of my searches now are, are going through that search term. And it's, it's, it's everywhere. There, I, I sat down in a coffee house uh, during the, the height of the lockdown uh, last summer uh, across from a, a woman who had a doctorate in psychology. And she was being paid a very, very good wage to make sure that the documents, and I can't mention the company, um, and the communications of this company were politically correct. She was going through their, their, their uh, advertising material, she was going through their uh, uh, their website. She was going through everything and being paid a heck of a wage. She didn't tell me what it was, but I figured it out in conversation. I used to be a stockbroker, so I'm really good at figuring out how much money people make. Um, so this is this is pervasive. It's everywhere, and it's disgusting. And I've gone on and well, on. I, mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't take it as far as saying it's disgusting. I would say that it's you know. There's nothing wrong with uh, using uh, pronouns or using uh, words that are not gender specific as long as it doesn't junk up the, the pros. Uh, and most of the time it doesn't. Most of the time it's, it's just fine to say, uh, use a non-gender specific pronoun, uh, in, in, or at least in many cases. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with uh, making sure that the that our culture is uh, equally tr treats women equally to men, treats uh, gays and trans, etc., equally to uh, straights. All of, you know, all of those examples. Th those are all noble ends, as far as I'm concerned. But that's just me. Other people yeah. may have a different viewpoint on that. Well, when, when I when I say disgusting, let me. I, I love Richard correcting me on the show. It's good. <laughs> you know, I, I, no, it's a good thing. It's a good thing, and I'm completely open to it. Let's just. Can you just kill his feet for a while, James? No, I'm kidding. Um, but when I when I say it's disgusting, uh, I as a writer I should use a better word. I, as long as people are aware of what's going on, made aware of what's going on, I'm much more comfortable with it. And as a commercial enterprise, people can do whatever they want, which is why you're you're finding chinks in Google's armor because more and more people are are being, and if they're politically on the far right, they are disgusted by it, and they can make that choice to use a different vendor. But, you know, uh, it, I, I wish people, I just wish people were a little smarter, but then we wouldn't have to say anything to talk about on the show. Well, so, you control, yeah. control language, you control thought, and that's kind of my yeah. feeling on that whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, ACLU has issued a, a statement Saying, say no to a cashless future. You're saying having, you know, going to a cashless future is a danger, is for personal privacy, and it's a governmental danger. So the ACLU is now starting to realize that, you know, this digital currency, you know, completely being online on digital online is a long-term danger, not because of uh, corporations tracking you, but because hey, the government can track you. Yeah, uh, they're finally starting to realize this. I, I'm, I'm just amazed and, 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 and gratified whenever the far left, ACLU, and the far right get together and agree on something. And this is a case where the, uh, the paranoids and the uh, uh, conspiracy theorists on the far right and uh, those on the far left are saying no to the same thing, which is, uh, which is uh, uh, the, the, the subject that we're talking about. I, I, I love to see it. Mm -hmm. And I think that that what in this case, and this is where you're in politics, James, actively, and and I am not. Um, they their their uh, objection to a cashless society comes from two completely different directions. On the the ACLU side is not is concerned a little bit with right to privacy and all the rest of that, but their 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 the major bug in their bonnet was about 
uh, people of color being more affected and poor people being more affected by the financial impact of having to go to a cashless society. And uh, because uh, something like 50% uh, of the black population is underbanked or underserved by banking and something like 60% of the Hispanic society. And um, so uh, every time you use, you know, people who are on the edge financially, uh, five percent uh, can make a big difference. Four percent can make a big difference. And and every time you use a card, uh, the the uh, there's a fee involved. You might not see it, but but those costs are passed on to um, you know the person using the card in one way or another. Um, and so uh, if you don't have a bank account, let's say you you've had your wages garnished, uh, you don't have proper documentation or anything, you're forced to go. Uh, you know, buy some kind of prepaid card to use and carry it around with you, and the fees on those are outrageous, and then you'll end up with a balance on it and that you can't use, and on and on and on. And they're upset about, uh, you know, the fact that uh, everything you do is tracked. So that if we're looking at politics in the future and trying to get people to be more more uh, liberty-based thinking, we need, we need to look at how to pitch... Um, the problems that that we understand as libertarians to both sides, and it could be for two different reasons. Because the ACLU's big drive in this was that it that it affected uh, people of color, and I think primarily and secondarily was the violation of civil liberties. Whereas the uh, the people on the right was it's the uh, having the deep state know everything they do. So in this case, they came together, and and I think it's a wonderful thing. Yeah, it's. You know, for those of us here down in the lower ends of the economic strata, a lot of work gets done cashless under the table mm -hmm. because it's not worth it to hire somebody to come in for an hour to clean your garage I mean, or to clean your driveway or or whatever. And so you'd be paying 20, give them a $20 bill and you come over and you spend an hour and you clean your driveway. Mm -hmm. No one's going to report that. And a lot of that economic activity happens quietly under the table. And it's nobody else's business. <laughs> well, it's the IRS's business. At least they'll tell you so. Yeah. Uh, and of course, that's that's the ultimate reason why the government is trying to push in uh, the direction of a cashless society. They want to make sure that every nickel that's ever earned by uh, anybody, uh, handyman, neighbor doing a favor for a neighbor, whatever, uh, doesn't escape the dragnet of, uh, of uh, federal taxation. Yeah, well, and there, there's... Go ahead, James. I'm sorry. Well, I was changing topics. Go ahead and finish. Yeah. Well, so they give you an example of what people are, are forced to become liars and criminals uh, by regulations that are, are supposed to be there to to protect them. Example, your example. Uh, in the state of California, you have this, this wonderful thing called the Contractor State License Board that, that constantly runs stings to, uh, to um, uh, arrest unlicensed contractors. So if, if you, you're supposed to have a licensed contractor put a water heater in your house, but the, the problem is that a licensed contractor to pull a permit wants a job to be a couple thousand dollars or more. And most jobs that people need done in their home, many of them, especially poor people, like small plumbing jobs, which a licensed plumber is supposed to do, uh, are a couple hundred dollar jobs. Or, but a lot of them are somewhere between... $400 and a couple thousand dollars. And that's where they become illegal because people will hire a handyman to do these things and they'll pay him cash. And so they've made the, the handyman is then a criminal, the poor widow who needs her, her uh, plumbing fixed so she has water to bathe and cook with and all the rest of that becomes a criminal. And, and you know, this is the, this, the regulation forces people to become criminals and, and, not just the idea that that they want to keep track of cash and what Richard I don't or James do either one of you know off the top of your head the the number for the percentage of the GDP that's that's actually unstated because it's underground economy I have no clue is it I think the state it's, it's large like, I don't know what I don't, I don't stated know numbers like stated numbers 15 percent and I would hazard a guess that it's probably closer to 30 percent so you know people are are uh, doing more with cash, not less. Yeah, and the well, idea yeah. that, that, you know, a business can turn you away when you're going in and trying to buy food because you don't have a card. Now, I, I agree. Private business can do whatever they want. They can say, 
pay me in Bitcoin. And if you don't want to do business with them, then you know, have Bitcoin. But it really affects uh, the poor much greater than the risk on a financial hardship basis and exposes people of wealth to uh, the IRS, as Richard said. So there's evils on all sides. Yeah, well, if you have a, a drain pipe, you know, from your sink, just, just a little short little piece of pipe, you know, that needs to be replaced because it's 50 years old and you have to call a plumbing company to come fix it. It's going to cost a freaking fortune. So you end up either fixing it yourself at, at substandard quality, <laughs> you know, or you hire a, someone who knows what they're doing under the table. Uh, it, it, this whole thing is goofy. It's, and talk about our earning our nickels, though. Inflation has arrived in force. And our grocery prices are going up. And people are buying stocks on margin again because, of course, they are. <laughs> have we not learned anything from the past, Richard? Well, the Fed says uh, no, no inflation, nothing to see here. That any inflation you're seeing is transitory. By uh, the, the the fable they're trying to spin is that because the economy was shut down a year ago, and we're seeing uh, in, uh, price increases from a year ago, uh, that those will go away once the economy gains steam and the supply comes back up. The problem with that is is one third of the money supply that's ever been created in the history of the United States, or at least since the Federal Reserve Board was created in 1913. One third of the money ever created has been, was created in the last, in the last uh, 18 months or something like that since the pandemic and, and the higher percentage since 2008. Uh, and at the same time, the supply of goods and services due to the lockdowns went way down uh, a year ago. So you've got two things making inflation happen. One, a lack of supply, and two, uh, a, a, a huge increase in demand given the increase in the amount of cash out there, uh, money in the uh, sloshing around in the economy. So to say that inflation uh, is transitory is, is totally bogus. Uh, inflation depends on two different things. One, it depends on the money supply related to the goods and services available for sale. And the second thing it depends upon or that it, it, that, that causes inflation is uh, sentiment. In other words, people uh, being afraid of inflation. And the more people are afraid of inflation, the more apt they are to say, let me spend these soon to be worthless dollars on real stuff before they are worth less. And that's mm -hmm. the psychological factor that starts inflation going uh, even faster. And that's happening now. We're seeing it particularly in real estate. Uh, people are borrowing because the interest rate is way low. Uh, they can afford it to borrow uh, huge amounts of money. Uh, a house which caught in California, which cost uh, $80,000 uh, 30 years ago is now selling for a million dollars. And it's not, it's the same house. It's the dollar that's worth less. Mm -hmm. uh, that's inflation. And inflation hits the economy in three stages. The first stage is, is raw materials, and we're seeing the price of steel, the price uh, the price of wood has tripled, the price of yeah, copper I think has tripled. Yeah. yeah, and the price of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, corn, uh, foodstuffs, has, got, has, you know, has, uh, has doubled. So you're looking at uh, a, a huge increase in the, in the uh, cost of, of uh, raw goods, raw materials. When manufacturers buy the raw materials, at some point they have to say, I have to raise my prices or I'm going to lose money on every sale and making more sales at, uh, at a loss is not going to, is not going to, not going to help me very much. So they start raising their prices. And at that point you see uh, wholesale prices go up. And once uh, the grocery store sees their wholesale price goes up or the hardware store or the retail establishment of whatever kind, they're going to maintain their margins as well and raise their prices. And that's when it actually starts to hit the consumer in the pocketbook where it hurts. And we're seeing it right now, uh, in particular in, in food prices, which have gone up dramatically in the last yeah. in the last little while. Food prices and housing prices. It's going to continue because there's uh, because of uh, the misbegotten policies of the Fed, federal federal government, they're still paying out unemployment bonuses. There's uh, extra unemployment insurance. They're still talking about more uh, lockdown uh, payouts. And uh, to the extent that people are saying, I don't think I'll get that job uh, at McDonald's or at, uh, uh, you know, being a clerk at Walmart or whatever it is. I think I'll just stay home and, and uh, make more money doing nothing, which is a totally rational thing to do. Mm -hmm. But the money, you know, the, the unemployment money keeps coming. And so that's what people do. So the supply is not keeping up with the uh, demand. 
So that's another reason why the, the inflation that we're seeing is not going to be transitory. Well, I want to point out this whole job shortage thing is a bit of a fallacy because these the low the low uh the, the bad jobs the the McDonald's jobs are going to be the last jobs to get filled because the people are going to try to get the better jobs first. You're not going to take a job at McDonald's as long as theoretically the job at the Target warehouse is still hiring. You're just not going to do it. And so these the, the the worst jobs are going to be the last jobs to get filled. And so if you've got a burger flipper job at, at with a bad with a bad boss they are not going to have a good time finding an employee for a while. It, it, because if you're an employee, why would you work for them when you've got hundreds of other places out hiring? And so they're just – those low-end jobs are just going to have a hard time. Not it, Because the money doesn't plan out. You only get half of your income plus 1200 bucks. So the, it doesn't work out unless you're a part-time worker. Well, and the other thing that's going on is, is you mentioned margin accounts, people borrowing on margin to buy stocks. Um for the last, uh, for the, I don't know, for the, for the last, I think, couple, two decades or so, we have seen a, a dramatic increase in the money supply, but no inflation. Why is that? Two reasons. One, we're seeing technological improvements, which is a deflationary force. Uh, if uh, a, a piece of equipment, uh, if your iPhone does more than your flip phone did uh, and costs the same, that's a deflationary force. Uh, so deflation in that sense has worked against inflation. But the other thing that's gone on is we haven't seen inflation, but we've seen inflation not measured by the consumer price index or the other cost of living indexes. We're seeing asset inflation. We're seeing the uh, uh, inflation in the price of stocks, inflation in the price of real estate, inflation in the price of commodities, inflation in the price of uh, like gold, uh, you know, value holding commodities and inflation in uh, cryptocurrencies. So, the inflation is, has, has been with us all along. It's just not officially measured. Yeah, well, inflation in the housing market has been insane. It just, in my neighborhood, inflation is in the housing market is insane. The price of my house is absolutely ridiculous. If I, if I wanted to sell it, it'd be... It'd be it's, you know, I live in the edge of the ghetto, right across the street from the, from the UC Davis Med Center. I have to deal with helicopters and all kinds of noise. And yet the house just down the street from me sold for six hundred and something thousand dollars. It's absolutely flipping ridiculous. And it's only going to get worse because of things like Aggie Square. And we are out of time. Thank you guys for watching this. Please catch us next week. And from all of us here at Team Counterpoint, please remember to love everybody. Thank you for watching the Libertarian Counterpoint. Listen each week in Sacramento on Comcast Channel 17 for Knuckleheads of Liberty on Monday at 5.30 p.m. and the Libertarian Counterpoint Show on Thursday at 8 p.m. Also on YouTube, Facebook, and podcasts everywhere. Please visit us at http colon slash slash www.libertariancounterpoint.com We invite you to come again next week for the Libertarian Counterpoint Productions.